Acrylamide is a food contaminant. It's not present in the raw ingredients that go to produce foods, but is instead a natural byproduct of cooking and is directly linked to the Maillard reaction, which is responsible for color and flavor development. It forms via a reaction between certain amino acids and sugars, which are naturally present in raw ingredients such as coffee beans, cereals and potatoes. Acrylamide cannot be measured in real time, and even within a finished batch of products there can be significant variations in levels. To reduce both overall levels and variability, manufacturers need to implement mitigation measures and demonstrate improved control over raw materials and production. Unfortunately, there is no single measure that would enable its complete elimination. The new regulation makes it explicit that acrylamide should be managed as part of a food business's food safety management system. Manufacturers should therefore apply a variety of mitigation tools to reduce levels in their products following the principle of as low as reasonably achievable or ALARA for short. The tools which are specifically applicable for potato crisp and snack manufacturers are outlined within Annex 1 of the regulation. Not all the tools will be applicable or effective for every product, but at every stage manufacturers should be able to show that they've taken sufficient steps to manage the issue and to demonstrate how the controls have been considered and, where appropriate, how they have been applied. Variety selection for potatoes for crisp production is dependent on a large number of factors. Uniformity of shape and size of tuber, homogeneous tuber quality, high starch content and low sugar content are all key considerations. Potato breeders have therefore developed specific varieties for crisping which meet these requirements alongside other valid considerations such as yields, disease and pest resistance, physical robustness, ability to cope with stress conditions and of course the ability to deliver consumer expectations on taste and appearance. Manufacturers should work closely with their potato suppliers to ensure that the varieties chosen are appropriate for making the end product. Resources such as the European Cultivated Potato Database provide information on the botanical, agronomic and quality characteristics for a range of currently available potato varieties. This and other similar national databases may be suitable starting points for manufacturers to help them to determine whether the varieties they have selected are suitable. As no single potato variety can grow all year round, manufacturers will typically utilize several varieties during the course of a year and for considerable periods manufacturers will be dependent upon stored potatoes. Potatoes which are stored will naturally undergo some physical changes, for example with starches being transformed into sugars. Varieties differ in their stability during storage, with some appropriate for use during early storage but then becoming unsuitable during later storage. Varieties that are used will also vary according to local specific soil and climatic conditions. However, new varieties are constantly being screened, with the most promising put into cultivation, storage and processing testing regimes. Manufacturers should work closely with their suppliers to establish the varieties that are most appropriate for their particular product, at a specific location and for the specific time frame in which they are intended to be used. They should also continue to review new and promising varieties as they come to market. 
Manufacturers may choose to create a variety calendar for the potatoes to be used during specific time periods as part of their food safety management system. If the specified amount of reducing sugars or the amount of bruised, spotted or damaged potatoes are exceeded, food business operators may still accept the potato supply by specifying additional mitigation measures. These should ensure that the presence of acrylamide in the final product is as low as reasonably achievable and below the benchmark level set out in Annex 4. It is important that manufacturers agree with the supplier on the quality requirements for incoming potato loads, in particular on sugar levels. Bruised, spotted or damaged potatoes can indicate issues with storage or handling. However, even within a poorer quality potato lot, it is possible to use inline sorters or employ manual sorting to remove individual potato tubers which are defective before the lot is sent for further processing. Whilst a significant quantity of potatoes used for crisping are processed soon after harvest, many potatoes will have to be stored prior to use. As with variety selection, controls on potato storage and release are key mitigation measures for manufacturers. The quality of potatoes destined for processing is determined by a number of factors, but in particular reducing sugar content. Crops which are stored for longer periods carry an increased risk that low temperature sweetening will occur. Poor storage controls can also lead to a variety of diseases which will naturally increase stress on the potato tubers and lead to increased sugar content in the raw material. Work closely with your suppliers to ensure that the variety you're using is stored under the most appropriate conditions and avoid using potatoes that have been subject to excessive low temperatures during storage. Some varieties are less prone than others to low temperature sweetening and equally some varieties can be stored at higher temperatures without significant sprouting issues. It may be possible for some potatoes that have been stored at lower temperatures to be reconditioned over a suitable time period at a higher temperature. Avoid leaving deliveries of potatoes standing outside overnight in freezing conditions as this may lead to an increase in sugars and negate the benefits of controlled storage. Music